given a function fx equals to square root of 1 minus 2x. Okay, the first question is to show that fx is 1 to 1 function. B is to find the domain and range of the function fx. C to determine the inverse function of fx and state its domains and range. And then to sketch the graph of fx and f inverse on the same axis. Alright, so for the first question, we're going to show that fx is 1 to 1 function. Right, so to do that, we can use this equation fx1 is equals to fx2. So that from the function square root 1 minus 2x, okay, we can substitute x with x1. Alright, and then for the right hand side, fx2, that's mean we substitute x equals to x2. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to simplify this equation. First, we can square both sides. So if we square both sides, what's left is just inside the third, which is 1 minus 2x1 equals to 1 minus 2x2. And then we can simplify this equation. So we can minus both sides by 1. Okay, and then the 1 is eliminated. And then we can divide both sides by negative 2. So what is left is x1 is equals to x2. So since we get this equation x1 equals to x2, so that's mean fx is 1 to 1 function. Right, so that is for the first question. Right, so the second question is to determine the domain and range for the function fx. Right, so for the domain, okay, we can determine the domain from the function which is set 1 minus 2x. Okay, we know that for a set, okay, the inside function is always positive okay so inside function is always positive so that's mean 1 minus 2x is greater and equals to 0 so from here we can simplify this inequality to solve for x that's mean uh, 1 is greater and equals to 2x or this is equivalent to 2x is less than equals to 1 and then we can divide both sides by 2 so we get x is less than equals to 1 over 2. So that's mean for the domain, which is domain is the value for x. So the domain of f is from negative infinity to 1 over 2. Right, so that is for the domain. And then for the range for the function, okay, we can determine from the, also from the equation. Right, so the range is basically the value for the y. And we know that fx is y. So y is equals to the square root of 1 minus 2x. And then we know that for the third or the square root, square root always positive. That's mean the square root is always greater and equals to 0. So that's mean, okay, the square root of 1 minus 2x is greater and equals to 0. And we know that one third 1 minus 2x is y. So that's mean y is greater and equals to 0. And the range for the function fx is okay, from 0 to infinity where 0 is included. Alright, so that is for question B. We find the domain and range. Now for the question C. Okay, we want to determine the inverse function of fx and state its domain and range. Alright, so to find the inverse function, okay, we can use the composite of f with its inverse. It should get equals to x. So we can let y equals to f inverse. So that's mean f f inverse is also equivalent to f y equals to x. So now we can substitute y into the function f x. So we substitute x with y and this is equals to x. And now we're going to simplify this equation so that y become the subject of the equation. Alright, so first we can square both sides. Okay, of the function so what is left at the left hand side okay so at the left hand side what is left is just the inside function the third which is 1 minus 2y and then at the right hand side become x square and then we can rearrange this equation so we can minus 1 both side and then we can divide both side by negative 2 so we get the function y or this is also equivalent to 1 minus x square over 2 and we know that y is actually f inverse so we can substitute back okay which is y is the f inverse all right so we get the function for the inverse 
and then we're going to state the domain and range for the inverse right so we know that the domain for the inverse is actually okay the domain and range for the inverse we know that the domain of f is going to be the range for the its inverse so that's mean the range for the inverse is from negative infinity to half and then for the range of the f will become the domain for the inverse function so this is from 0 to infinity right so we get the inverse function and also the domain and the range for the inverse function all right so next okay the last question is to sketch the graph of fx okay and f inverse on the same diagram or on the same axis all right so we have the function fx is set 1 minus 2x and the inverse which is 1 minus x square over 2 all right so the first one we can choose either to sketch the graph of fx or for the f inverse so let's say i want to sketch the graph for the fx all right so first we're going to determine the shape okay the shape for the this graph is from the sine of x and sine of y right so sine of x is the sine okay or the coefficient of x inside the circle so which is a negative value there so the sine of x is negative and then the sine of y is the coefficient for the third which is okay the whole third here there are no sign there so that means it's a positive value x negative y positive so the shape is at the second quadrant there all right so next is to determine the point p right so to determine the point p for x coordinate okay we take that inside the third function and then we equate equals to zero and then we solve this we get x is equals to half okay that is the x coordinate for point p and then for y coordinate we just copy back this function and then we change fx to y and then we just make the whole third become zero okay so that's mean y is equals to zero so that's mean the point p uh, for this question is half zero right so next is to find the intercept so we can find the y intercept for the function fx so y intercept is when x equals to zero so when x equals to 0, y is equals to set 1 minus 2 times 0. So 1 minus 2 times 0, 2 times 0 is 0. So this is equivalent to set 1 and set 1 is equivalent to 1. And then we can find the x intercept. Right, so x intercept is when y equals to 0. So that means set 1 minus 2x equals to 0. And then we can square both sides. We get 0 equals to 1 minus 2x. So 2x is equals to 1, so x equals to half. Alright, so now we have all the information that we need. So now we can sketch the graph for the fx. We sketch the y-axis and the x-axis. Alright, and then it has a point P. Okay, we put the scale here. So the first one, we have uh, the point P at half zero. So the point going to be here, okay, which is the point P and then you also have the y intercept when x equals to 0 y equals to 1 okay this is y intercept so we just put the shape into our point p okay and must be crossing the value of y equals to 1 there so the graph might be look like this right so this is graph for fx and next we can to sketch the inverse okay we just reflect the graph on the line y equals to x so what is on the x axis will become at the y axis and also what is on the y axis will be half at the x axis right so the graph will be like that